He has a beard and he has a mustache. He looks like dressed up in white. He is very bright. He is Heavenly Father's son. Jesus is a brother. He'd sacrifice a lot. Like, he tells us to care about other people. He'd like warn people about stuff, like, and make sure they're all safe because he cares about each one of us. Candle of faith, candle of faith, candle of faith is with you and Jesus. We are your children, we are your children. Make every step with you and faith with hope and love. We learn, we believe, we witness in Jesus. Welcome back to another week of Grade 3 Catechism. I hope you guys are all doing great. We've got a great lesson today, but before we begin, let's start off with our prayer. God, our loving Father, we thank and praise you for the abundance of blessings you bestow on each one of us, our families, our communities, and more especially the Church. Thank you for making me a member of the Church and giving me this opportunity to learn about the people chosen by God. Bless us with the gift of your Holy Spirit, so we too may recognize God's call in our life and respond faithfully like Mother Mary, Abraham, Moses, and the many others who also did so in the history of the Catholic Church. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome back, everyone. Today's lesson, Lesson 8, continues with the story of Moses and the Israelites. If we recall from our past lesson, God gave Moses a set of commandments that the Israelites were to follow. However, as we'll soon discover, the Israelites did not keep their word. While Moses was on the mountain talking to God, the Israelites stayed at the base of the mountain waiting for Moses' return. They became impatient, however, and eventually they found Moses' brother Aaron and told him that they were tired of waiting for Moses and for God. They told Aaron to make new gods, so Aaron asked them to take off their gold jewelry and give it to him. Aaron melted down the gold and made a golden idol that looked like a calf. Aaron presented the idol to the Israelites and told them to worship it instead of God. The Israelites offered their sacrifices to their new God. Meanwhile, up on the mountain, God knew what was happening at the foot of the mountain and told Moses he wanted to punish the Israelites. But Moses stood up for the Israelites and told God that he would talk to them instead. Can anyone tell me which of the Ten Commandments the Israelites were breaking? If you said the first one, you're correct. The first commandment tells us that there is only one true God, and we should not have any other gods before our one true God. The Israelites, by creating a new God and in the form of a golden calf, clearly went against that first commandment. God saw this and wanted to punish them, but Moses did not want punishment on his people and told God that he would go and talk to them. So the Lord sent Moses down the mountain with two stone tablets of the covenant law in his hands. When Moses got down to the base of the mountain and saw his people worshiping the calf, he was so angry that he threw down the stone tablets, breaking them into pieces. He then took the gold calf that they had made and melted it down in the fire and grounded it into powder. He put the powder into water and made the people drink it. If we reflect on the story, we can see the grave sin that the Israelites committed. God created all of us to live a happy life. But in order for us to be happy, we need to obey God's commandments. 
the commandments God gave us are a guide to help us avoid sin. In the Apostle John's first letter in the Bible, he writes, Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. This verse might sound complicated, but John is simply condemning sin and leaving no excuse for it. Sin is a violation of God's commandment, and it distracts us in our walk with God. John tells us that we must try to avoid sin at all costs. Not only do the commandments help us avoid sin, but they also show us how to love God. When we obey the commandments that God gave us, we show our love to God. In the Gospel of John, Jesus tells us, If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandment and abide in his love. In this Bible verse, Jesus tells us that if we keep his commandments, we will abide in his love. This just means that we will live in God's love if we can follow his rules. Loving God is as simple as obeying his commandments. Our best example of someone who followed God's commandments is Jesus himself. Jesus is our role model. He obeyed his father's commandments and by doing so, Jesus remained in his father's love. We should also aim to be like Jesus and live accordingly. When we violate these commandments, we rebel against God. It is sin. If we recall from our previous lesson, the Ten Commandments that God gave to Moses on two stone tablets can be contained into two. Love God above all and love your neighbor as yourself. We've learned that we can show our love to God by obeying the commandments. And secondly, we are commanded to love everyone since Jesus teaches that everyone is our neighbor. Following these commandments can be hard, though, and we may be tempted to violate God's commandments. These instigations are called temptations. The same Satan who tempted Adam and Eve can also tempt us, too. We must see that these temptations lead us to sin and therefore fight against them and overcome them. Again, we can look at Jesus as our model. Satan tempted Jesus too, but Jesus stood up to Satan and defeated him. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus teaches us how to conquer temptation. Jesus says, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Jesus' words, of course, fit your situation and mine. Jesus shows us that the best way to fight the bad influences in our life is by praying. When we pray, we become empowered, and as a result, we can conquer Satan and his temptation. When we say no to Satan, we become stronger as individuals and also as members of the church. It's important for us to recognize the temptations in our life and stay on the good path to eternal salvation. I know that was a lot for today's lesson, but I hope you all gained some insight on how to live as faithful members of the church. Before we end today's lesson, I do have some activities that might help further your understanding of what we went over today. Number one, try to think of any temptations in your life. Was there ever a temptation to steal, lie to your parents? Try writing a prayer to help you overcome these temptations so you can avoid it next time. And number two, the Israelites got impatient with God and decided to obey him. What do you think they should have done? Are there times in your life when you become impatient with God? What should you do? Anyways, that's it for today. I hope you all learned something new. Let's end off with our closing prayer. God, our loving Father, we thank you for always guiding us and showing us the correct path to salvation. Thank you for always empowering us even when we're faced with evil desires or bad influences. We ask that you help us to continue following your path and abide in your love. We ask for your love 
so that we too can show our love for everyone around us. Please help us be strong like Jesus and reject Satan so we can grow as faithful members of your church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. That's all for today, kids. Next week's lesson will be a little different from what we've been learning for the past few lessons. We'll shift away from the Old Testament and instead look at stories from the New Testament. Can't wait to see you then. Bye.